Welcome, adventurer. I'm Dirk Pickle, and this is my tavern. Please find a seat and relax by the fire, and listen in, for we all have our tales to tell. Tonight's tale is titled, My Experience with the Chosen King of Neckbeards. So, I joined a D&D group in my local area. I was the youngest, being 14 at the time, but my dad had raised me with RPGs, and I'd already played and DM'd a few campaigns. But this would be the first outside of friends and family. But regardless, I was fairly mature for my age, could hold a decent conversation, so I felt confident it wouldn't be awkward. I've been in similar situations before. So we all get together and write up our characters. I chose the group since all the people involved like Warhammer, which I was a massive fan of, and being Warhammer nerds we all had very grim dark characters. Another important note is that cosmetic changes were considered allowed on our part as long as they made sense with the rules. I liked pretty much all the characters, they pretty much all appealed to my teenage edge. These included a dwarven barbarian who planned to multiclass into paladin, a drow rogue, a human-ish, definitely not a chaos worshipper warlock, me as a dragonborn cleric, biblical revelation style, who spat boiling blood, and finally, the fighter elven fighter. All the players were really nice. The DM was a great storyteller and really got us into role playing, especially the fighter. You see, the fighter was played by a foul smelling fellow who would always wear an anime t-shirt. But I'd be damned if he didn't hang his trench coat and fedora by the door on the way in. Because Jesus Christ, things got ugly with him. For starters, his character was a total self-insert, basically being a taller, more attractive version of him but he always insisted on fighting with a katana. Despite the DM constantly reminding him that we were in a northern medieval setting, and I mean medieval, the streets of mud, and the plague patrol going down every other day, but he gave excuses like, people surely buy such unique and high quality blades brought in by wandering merchants. The DM didn't want katanas in his campaign, but eventually caved and sold it to him for double the price of a usual sword. The barbarian would, in his usual friendly rivalry kind of way, mock him for having such a thin sword. These interactions would usually go something like this. Can't handle a real sword, can you, you pointy-eared fairy man? You can't handle a real weapon, you savage. This weapon takes skill, precision, discipline, and years of training, the likes of which you couldn't even handle. You instead choose to wildly hack away like some uncivilized brute, and insult those who use more precise weapons simply because you're scared of them as opposed to what happened with other characters, which would usually go like this. Too scared to use a real weapon to kill your enemies, your walking sack of potatoes. You only say that because if you attack them from afar, you'd only be able to hit their shoes. Oh, but my granddad's glorious white beard, it is on. Whoever kills the most marauders wins the other one's rations. May the best man or whatever you are win. But that's not all. The fighter would also go on long drawn out monologues every time something important in the plot happened usually in some attempt to make it about him, which segues into the next issue. He wanted to be the Mary Sue of the world, and during the later parts when the DM wasn't giving it to him, he tried to, ba to be the backseat DM, who'd always tried to influence the world for their player. Not only that, but he wanted to be perfect, beautiful and infallible, as opposed to our ragtag gang of morally questionable individuals who you would not want to encounter on the street at night but he just had to be always on the right, so quick to condemn us of being not worthy to represent the light. Despite the only one of us trying to do so happening to be a lunatic from the desert who thought the light would turn the seas to blood. One more weird thing was that he would always have his character try to hit on the rogue, which both her character and the player were visibly uncomfortable with. Of course, he never admitted it since he wanted his character to have his own harem. But then things started getting really bad, when the stakes started to raise and a true quest became apparent, and the campaign came into its own. He started butting heads with pretty much everyone else involved. But I seemed to bear the brunt of it, as both the characters and players were in stark contrast. My character has garnered a reputation as a herald of Armageddon, the messenger of a vengeful god who both warns of his coming wrath and smites the sinners who stand against it. However, of course, Fighter, King of the Neckbeards, couldn't stand religion. 
He went on various monologues about how there are no gods in this uncaring world and religion is for brain-dead cultists who want to start another Spanish Inquisition. Which annoyed me a fair bit, since I was and am a fairly steadfast Catholic. Catholics don't really regard revelation as valid, for a number of reasons, which is why I felt able to make a character based around it. But I tried to only argue in character, giving off loose biblical verses, and things that aren't but sound like they are. Me and the rest of the group were leaning towards an ending like Revelation, where divine fury is cast into the world, and the suddenly vengeful armies of the gods and those humans still loyal face off against those tempted by devils in their false miracles as all hell breaks loose. But Neckbeard had other plans. He wanted to effortlessly save the world and become the king of everything ever, because he's just that good. Oh, and we would get to be like middle class or something. But the DM didn't like that, so we tended to lean more towards the biblical route. Keep in mind this only really kicked into gear around a quarter into the campaign. We started facing more biblical enemies, and the plot began advancing in that direction. Around halfway through we started getting more involved with the gods. The barbarian, who at this stage was equal parts barbarian and paladin, and was some sort of badass avatar of war, became a chosen warrior of various gods of war, fire and metal. The warlock became a champion of the dark gods, gaining forbidden powers and eldritch secrets in return, and the rogue began to develop plans involving eleven gods. It was all coming together, a mix of grim dark fantasy and revelation biblical stories. The stage was well on the way to being set, but the neckbeard, despite being offered multiple chances to become a champion of some form of divinity, refused. Because he feared no gods. Eventually he became fed up with having to not be the best at everything and having the campaign not go his way, he became increasingly lone wolf, and just generally upping the cringy anime protagonist thing. After multiple hissy fits at the table, he decided to challenge me to a duel. Now you see my character would have definitely jumped at the chance to put that arrogant shit in his place, and show him the true power of God. So I accepted. Fight. Now, despite the inherent unfairness of a cleric versus fighter duel, who still acted as if he was somehow honourable, but between me choosing war domain and being the chosen prophet of the dice gods, I actually somehow won the fight, and I made a show of it. Flawless victory. The blood of saints seared his skin, and holy flame scorched his bones as the wrath of the gods made manifest rain down from the heavens, an overwhelming victory on my part. And as I billowed about how he should know his place against the gods, he started saying it wasn't fair, and that I cheated by getting my god involved, and that I wasn't honourable. Other characters remarked on how a fighter going against a cleric who can't even use his divine powers wasn't exactly honourable, but he just had none of it and demanded that I heal his wounds and fight him fairly. I remind you that he was laying on the ground, bleeding severely. I told him I am an avatar of my god, and his and my actions are one and the same, and as such the use of him was all well and good. I told him I wouldn't rematch him, and then I healed his wounds, but oh no. Oh lord no, he wasn't having any of that. He immediately tried to rush me while I had my back to him and had just healed him. This was the guy who complained about honour. The barbarian and the warlock stepped in, saying this wasn't a duel anymore. But he just told them to, get out of my way or I'll show you my wrath as well. They proceeded to beat the shit out of him. He then chucked a tanty about how it's not fair and this is where it gets real juicy. He started yelling about how he was being targeted because he was the smartest, because he had the best character and we were all jealous, and apparently we all just didn't appreciate it because we had unsophisticated western taste. Keep in mind he was the whitest one of us all. He literally threw a book at me, and yelled at me about how I'm ruining the world with my bigoted western views and abhorrent religion. And I was genuinely terrified. For one, the book hurt like hell, and two, he was a 30 year old man and I was some bone-thin 14-year-old. I mean, I did look older than I was, but I was still bloody shaking. He then proceeded to storm out of the house. We continued the session, but it was pretty awkward, and I was left pretty scared. He might have been a neckbeard at heart, but he was actually pretty physically imposing, and I was still shaken. Next session, he shows up, despite being kicked from the group chat. He walks over to the table like nothing happened, but then the barbarian says... We don't want you here. You scared the bloody hell out of the boy. He's still got bruises all over his face. He's only a kid for Christ's sake. To which the neckbeard replied, 
He deserved it, and he'll get more if you don't let me play. At which point I was getting scared, and I was spring-loaded to bolt to the other side of the house. But then the DM said, Leave the kid alone and get the bloody hell out of my house before I call the police. The neckbeard must have thought he was tough for scaring someone half his age, because he thought he could intimidate the DM. The warlock called the police. Whilst the barbarian got pictures of his car, by the time he realised what's happened, the neckbeard bolted to his car and drove off, where the police found him on the road. Apparently, he'd been in trouble for trying to bully children into giving him things, rare cards and collector's items and whatnot, and after that, we never saw him again. The campaign continued on and was really fun from there. The rogue's new boyfriend joined in and he was really cool. He filled the role that the neckbeard left, but with much less anime, and the campaign eventually came to a climactic end that just couldn't have been better. And there we have it. A pretty interesting horror story, I'd say. But at least it had a happy ending. And it's really good to have a story in which the actual party members stood up for somebody against that guy, especially in a situation where we have a fully grown adult bullying a child. Have you ever played in a game like this with somebody like that? What did it take for people to stand up to them? Or did people stand up to them at all? Or did the game just die eventually? I look forward to hearing what you have to say and reading your stories. And remember, the tavern is always open. Good night.